Hello everybody and welcome to another Houdini tutorial. My name is Kate and today we are learning about how to make drool effects in Houdini. There's a few simple ways to do this. Um, in this case, you just have to pick some geometry, draw some lines, and emit some interesting particle effects. And I'm going to walk you through on how to do it to create kind of like an effect you see here where you have drool coming down from the teeth while you also have it coming down off the little chin here and you have these kind of lines where it wraps around the original geometry. So let's dive right in and let's get started. So as you can see already, before, you, <laughs> before we start on anything else, you'll notice that I have a skull geometry here. I've downloaded this off of free3d.com and you can go pick up the asset over there. All I've done over here is I have dropped down, I've laid down a file node, been poured in my skull, and then I've added down a null over here. And I'm just going to turn off my visualizers as, it, as at this stage we don't really need them. I'm also going to turn off my lights as we probably don't need those as well. I then polyfilled it and I'm just going to move this up over here. And I've also converted it to polygons because uh, when you bring in this asset into Houdini, Houdini is going to recognize it as an FBX and you kind of want it to make sure it works with your scene. So down here you can see some collision stuff, but more on this later. So now we can dive into the actual system itself. And there are two main systems to this system. As you can see here, there are the drool drips down the chin you can see here. And then if you also look at the drool lips, there's drool coming down from the lips. So going inside here, you can see this all starts up here at this little object merge. What this object merge is, is that we're bringing in the skull that we talked about previously. I've then unwrapped it just so we can have some UVs properly on it. And if I, I've also laid down a UV quick shade. This UV quick shade is just going to add a, a let us visualize or unwrap. Uh, you don't have to get this completely accurate as it's not really your model, but um, this works really, really well. So my unwrap settings are this, where I change the planes as well as the scale spacing, and that's pretty much it. I've then down put a little null here for the skull itself. And then down here are our two main simulations. On this little output, we have the lines or the drool that's coming down the sides of the mouth. And over here, we have the drool coming down from the lips. So let's start with the side drool. So what I've done over here is I've drawn some curves. And I'm just going to ghost this for a bit. Um, ghosting it's probably not going to work too well. But anyway, you can see that I've drawn some lines. And how you're going to set up this draw curve, we're just going to walk you through it very quickly. So you put down a draw curve and you pump in two new curves over here. Highlight it and you're, uh, right away you're going to see this plane. And this plane is a default geometry that you can draw on that comes in with a node. In this particular case, we want it to draw on the skull, not the plane itself. So we're going to go to the projection and then we're going to go down to geometry and you'll see it switch over to the skull. You're then going to turn off show guide geometry because it's really hard to draw with all this geometry visualized. And you can click use UVs and that should draw on top of the UVs on your model. And from there you can just draw lines where you want them. Cool. But you're also going to notice that Oh, wait, after this, it's containing both the geometry and my lines. Well, how do I get rid of that? Well, you're going to lay down a delete note. So you're going to go over to the group, select the skull, and then you can delete the, all the primitives under the skull group. And so that's pretty much how I set up the draw curve for this. And basically, it's all up to you of where you want to place it. Try and place it naturally around the cheekbones of where you think the drool will actually fall. And then down here, you want to give this a little bit of animation because um, drool just doesn't appear all at once. So 
So what I've done over here is just add a little curve that I've just animated over time on the second U of the UVs. So over here, you can see that there's a few keyframes. Over here, it starts at zero. You can see it slowly move outwards and go down until it's completely all the way at one. Then I'm gonna visualize my points and you can see that these lines are very chonky. Like you can see some very sharp lines in them and drool, it, drool itself is not gonna have those sharp lines. So we're going to resample them and you can see all of a sudden they became very smooth. There's two things in order to get this kind of smooth subdivision on your resample and that is to first lower your length. So I've lo lowered this to a 0 0.02 and then I've gone to treat polygons as and I've switched this over to subdivision curves. If you leave this on to straight edges you can see that kind of change, right? But if you add subdivision curves all of a sudden it becomes very curvy which is exactly what you want. Over here you might see this transform. Um, and you, you're going to encounter this when you use draw curves because it's drawing so close to the surface. So if we turn our geometry back on and we go back to the resample, you can see that it's kind of hiding, the curves are kind of hiding inside the geometry. And we don't really want that. So by transforming up just a little bit, they are still resting on the surface, but um, we can now see them, which is great. So then out here I've added a line, which is just collecting all of our lines. Okay, so over here I just wanted to visualize the lines on my surface. And you can kind of see that I have, based on the resample, kind of created these wire radius or little wires just so I can see where the lines from my drill actually are. And I'm pumping that back into the skull geometry up here. The resample over here that I mentioned earlier that's resampling these lines, I've also turned on the tangent attribute and the curve view attribute. So without these attributes, um, we can't really create a really good ramp for our polywire. Um, so I've just turned those attributes on. So from the surface, they don't really look really big, but as they fall, the drill gets bigger. But also this method doesn't really work out because with polywire, it has very flat ends. And you, in order to fix that, you'll probably add, need to add more subdivisions, which is probably not in your most idealized way. But this is a great way to visualize where your drool is in your scene. So before we do anything else, we go to our pop net. We've added a little pop net over here. And what this is doing, it is creating particles for our drool. And as you can see, something's happened where it's displaying sprites. So I'm going to go over to my display options, turn off display sprites, and we should be able to see our particles again, which are right there. So switching back over, we can see that we're emitting particles from this line. I've also scaled the time down to 0 0.6 so the drool falls slower. And for now, I'm going to hide other objects. So if we dive inside, We'll first work our way over from this side to this side. But basically what we're doing is we're going to the source input and we're using the first context geometry and it's scattering over the surfaces. The birth, uh, we have 18,000 particles and we've turned down the life expectancy and the variance, up the variance as well. We've then added some air resistance on the pop winds, amplitude, swirl size, and swirl scale are all modified. And over here, we've added some drag, so some more air resistance of four. And over here on the pop object, we've used object transform. We've changed the physical attributes of the drool, lowered both the bounce and forward rates, and we've upped the friction just a little bit. Over here, we haven't really changed anything on the pop solver, but we've also added some gravity as well, and we've lowered this to negative one. So over here, you might notice a collision object. And basically what this collision object is, is bringing in the skull. And the easiest way to set up a static collision object in Houdini is to, you dive into the pop net you wish to set up the collision object. You go up to the surface, you go up to collisions, and you select the object you'd like to turn into a collision object, and you press enter. 
and you select it in the viewport. So you can see something did happen. And if we go over here, we can see that it's created a new set of BBDs for us over here on this side. Um, and if we dive in here and we go to our PopNet, we can see that it's already made another skull static solver, but this will also appear as well. So we're not going to really need that right now because we already have it set up in our scene, but that's pretty much the easiest way to set up a collision object. Keep this on manual, go up here and delete what we don't need. And then just bring this back down again. Just gonna go over to manual. There we go. Okay, so already here you can see that I've made some modifications to the VBD. So if we go to sort volume collision source, we can go over here to our volume side and lower the voxel size. I've turned off re relative referencing because I don't want that to crash my computer. So on this side, I've just lowered the sampling level so we have more detail in the skull itself when it gets converted to a VBD. I'm just gonna put my little marker up there. I'm gonna go into my drill setup, go down here, and you can see it's bringing in the skull which is great, but if we turn off display geometry and turn on collisions, you can see the skull is in there perfectly. So that's kind of what it should look like. And then over here you can further lower or increase the division size depending on what you want to do. So I'm going to turn this back off, go to display geometry, go over to physical, and what I've also done for the skull is that I've lowered the bounce and the forward ratio, a bounce forward ratio, just so like the jewel kind of sticks to his face a bit and we get more of like a clumping action in it. But this is really dependent on you. So after that, we can play back the particles and we can see the particles building up and going down. All the way down his face like that, which is, which is great. It is really following the line of the source. So presumably if you wanted to resample that even more, or if you wanted to convert the line to particles, that's something you could do. But in this case, I wanted some definitive lines to just highlight the jaw area. Um, going down here to the particle fluid surface, you can see it's meshing the particles together. So my particle separation, I just kind of lowered it along with the voxel scale, the influence scale, and the droplet scale. And that's pretty much what I did on this, but it should rematch your drool just fine. Then over here at the lines, I've got a little null and that's getting pumped up to the surface. Now jumping up here to our drool that is on the lips of the little skull, we can kind of see that a similar sort of thing is happening here. And I'll show you how, what's going on. So going back up here to our draw curve, you can see that I've drawn multiple lines on the surface. It's the same concept as we covered over earlier over here, and it's the same settings, projection settings as well. The only difference is that I've chosen to highlight where my lines are in relative to the gums, just so you can see where the different emitters are. And that's one really cool thing about the draw curve node in Houdini. So then I've also deleted the mesh so we can just see the lines itself. And you'll also notice I kind of screwed up a bit where you can see one of the lines has a separate piece that's attached to the teeth down here. So what I've also done is selected that and blasted it away because I don't want any drool coming off of those teeth. Then you can see that these probably need to be resampled because they're very sharp. So I resampled them. I've interpolated the curves. You can keep these on if you want to. I've lowered the length to 0 0.1 smooth it out a little bit more so we have more wavy bumpy emitters and then transform those upwards just so they fit on the gum line a little bit more. If you don't transform them this is kind of where they rest and I wanted those to go forward just a little bit more. So then I added a null so those are the lips. I've then scattered some points across them as you can see. I don't think I need this add node anymore I'm just going to get rid of it. And then I've chosen which points I want to delete. So basically I've switched this delete over to points 
and then delete by range and selecting a group a range of points to delete based on the curve. I've then added another pop net. And basically the easiest way to create similar jewel in Houdini is just by taking the pop net we have over here, copying it and pasting it over here. So you can have a similar setup and settings to the drool that's in here. And then you don't have to create another collision object for your skull. So you can do that and it'll work the same way. The only thing you'll need to change is what we're gonna show in this node over here. So this is the, if you basically copy and paste this, you'll notice that the playback doesn't really happen. And that's because it's not sampling points. So we're going to dive inside to this one that I've edited the sample points and I'll show you some changes that I've made. So you can see that the scale time is exactly the same as the copied, the pop net over here as well. Diving inside, we just got our skull collision object. Up here at the source first input, we have points, first context geometry, constant birth rate's the same, Life expectancy and variance is the same as our jewel coming down our chin. Pop winds, pretty much the same as well. Pop drag, same as well. And our changes on here are the same for our particles. Pop solver, completely okay. And gravity is the same as well. So the only thing that's really changed in this pop solver from the pop solver we used earlier is basically it's selecting points instead of scattering on top of surfaces. So I'll just delete that. Then I've added a particle fluid surface and that should sample exactly where your emitters are. And if we play that back, we should see the drool fall down from the lips. And these sims are very light, so you should be fine depending on what type of computer you have. But that's pretty much how you make the drool coming down from the lips. And as you can see, it's sensing the collision object because it's kind of sitting on the top there. So that's really great too. And then we have our little null here. And that's pretty much it. That was a quick flyby of how to set up a drool setup in Houdini. And I hope you enjoyed this lesson. My name is Kate and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.